Hello everyone. Urinalysis is a test every acute care physician sees a million times a day. And we all think we know how to interpret it, but I would argue that this is the most dangerous test in clinical medicine, and here is why. In a perfect world, this is how a urinary tract infection would play out. The patient comes in complaining of painful urination, frequency, urgency, with or without fever, so then we decide to order a urinalysis in order to look for signs of infection, meaning bacteria, and inflammation, meaning leukocytes. We can either use a urine dipstick or lab-based analysis, which will usually include biochemistry and microscopy. There are also automated analyzers, of course. Now, the bacteria that most commonly cause urinary tract infections, like E. coli, produce nitrites. And simple urine dipsticks can detect nitrites. They can also detect leukocyte esterase, an enzyme that is found in, surprise, surprise, leukocytes, right? And if microscopy is available, again, we can visualize bacteria. We can also count the leukocytes in the urine sediment. And basically, anything above 10 leukocytes per high power field is considered abnormal. Now let's go back to our patient with painful urination. So we did order this urine test and sure enough it did come back positive for nitrites and leukocyte esterase and microscopy showed more than 50 leukocytes per high power field. All in all, the diagnosis couldn't be simpler. It's a urinary tract infection. We administer an antibiotic and the patient gets better. Simple, right? Well, the trouble is that almost every patient who comes into the emergency department, before they even have the time to blink, someone will order a urinalysis. And many of these tests will come back positive for bacteria and leukocytes. Yes, the patient did come in with a broken leg or with a gunshot wound, but I guess they have a urinary tract infection as well, right? Good thing we ordered that urine test, otherwise we wouldn't have known that. Or an elderly patient with an altered level of consciousness and fever is brought in, we don't know what is the cause of their altered level of consciousness, but then we order a urinalysis and voila, it's a urinary tract infection, it's a urinary tract infection. Wow, good thing we took that urine test, right? Case closed, that's the explanation. You see where I'm going with this. If we treat every single leukocyturia and bacteriuria as a proper urinary tract infection, two things will happen. Number one, we will administer a lot of antibiotics to a lot of people who don't need antibiotics because they don't have a urinary tract infection. And remember, antibiotics are not harmless drugs. They have their side effects, not to mention Clostridium difficile diarrhea, a terrible problem that is becoming global and no one really knows how to deal with it. There are also other side effects, not to mention rampant bacterial resistance rates. And in the end, antibiotics do cost money. The second, even worse thing that will happen is that we will attribute all sorts of symptoms, all sorts of terrible conditions like sepsis or delirium or fever in general to a urinary tract infection that isn't even there, which means we will miss the right diagnosis. And I don't have to explain the consequences of that, right? So why does this happen and what can we do to avoid these mistakes? Anyone who works in acute care quickly realizes that urinary tract infections are incredibly common, second only to acute respiratory tract infections. We all know that. We also know that many patients, especially the elderly, will not present with your typical textbook signs of a urinary tract infection. There will be no localizing signs. There will be no dysuria, so painful urination, frequency, urgency, flank pain, suprapubic pain. No, instead, many will present just with fever or with fever and delirium or signs of sepsis or simply weakness and vomiting, vague abdominal pain. And here lies the danger. We know that UTIs are very common. We know that they often present with very vague, unspecific symptoms. So it becomes so easy to attribute any vague abdominal pain to a possible urinary tract infection, vomiting to a urinary tract infection, weakness, delirium, sepsis, anything can be attributed to a urinary tract infection. And in the end, Every patient with these vague symptoms has their urine tested. Even patients with no signs of a urinary tract infection, either specific or unspecific ones, 
have their urine tested. At first, this might sound like a sound policy, better safe than sorry, right? But as the age of the patient increases, the older they are, the more chronic diseases they have, the more likely it is that they will have asymptomatic bacteriuria and asymptomatic pyuria even. This is especially common in nursing home residents, in patients who have adult diapers, not to mention patients with chronic urinary catheters. Pretty much 100% of patients with urinary catheters will have bacteriuria after a week or so, right? See how misleading or dangerous it could be to attribute their symptoms to this bacteriuria that they've had for who knows how long. Once again, imagine a patient from the beginning of this video, an elderly patient with fever and delirium. You take a urine sample and you find either bacteria or leukocytes and you start treatment for a UTI. When the patient actually has bacterial meningitis or endocarditis or bowel ischemia or who knows what. This is not an imaginary story. I've seen this happen time and time again. But this is not the only problem with urinalysis. In elderly, especially mobile patients, especially patients with diapers, it's extremely difficult to obtain a high quality urine sample, one that is not contaminated with, you guessed it, bacteria and leukocytes. Bottom line, in elderly patients, especially if they are immobile, especially if they are nursing home residents, especially if they have urinary catheters or other abnormalities to their urinary tract, urinalysis becomes much less reliable and a urinary tract infection basically becomes the diagnosis of exclusion. So on one hand, we know that urinary tract infections are extremely common, that they are one of the most common sources of sepsis. And we know that the patients who are at risk for asymptomatic bacteria and pyuria are also at risk for proper urinary tract infections. On the other hand, there are many people out there, especially the elderly, who have asymptomatic bacteria and pyuria that doesn't have anything to do with their current symptoms because it's asymptomatic. So how do we resolve this issue? What can we do about that? Well, there are no guidelines that would help us with this everyday dilemma. It's incredible, but we don't have guidelines for this. But what we do have is a common sense approach that can help us a lot. I highly recommend that you take a look at the articles I included in the description of this video. They nail the problem and they offer a brilliant and simple solution for this. It will not be 100% accurate, but it will definitely improve our approach to patients with suspected urinary tract infections. And here is the shortened version. If the patient presents with typical symptoms of a urinary tract infection and you find leukocytes and bacteria in their urine sample, well then this is a no-brainer. In all likelihood, this really is a urinary tract infection. Simple as that. But if the patient presents with vague, unspecific symptoms that can be attributed to a urinary tract infection, but also to a million other things, then Yes, again, do take a urine sample, but don't stop there. Check for other potential sources of infection. So do a thorough physical examination, look for signs of pneumonia, uh, skin and soft tissue infections, even central nervous system infections if the patient presents with an altered level of consciousness, of course. And after you've done all of that, you didn't find anything besides leukocytes and bacteria in urine, well then, this probably, hopefully, really is just a urinary tract infection. So if your patient is septic, start treatment right away. But if they're not septic, Probably you can withhold antimicrobial treatment for a while, broaden your diagnostic workup a little bit, and then when you get more information, then you can make the final decision. The point of this lecture is that your analysis, just like any other test, is simply another puzzle that you need to fit into the overall picture. Context matters. No diagnostic test in the world is 100% sensitive and 100% specific. And your analysis, it's not even close to that. I'm just, no, no. So context matters. Symptoms matter. Always start with the symptoms and then interpret the diagnostic tests in conjunction with the clinical presentation with the patient's symptoms. And finally, if the patient presents with no symptoms of urinary tract infection, either specific 
or unspecific ones. These are your people with gunshot wounds and broken legs, right? Why would you order a urine sample? What? Because it's routine? Save yourself the trouble. If you don't need your analysis, simply don't order your analysis. If you have colleagues or students that could learn something from this lecture, please send them the link. It will help them and it will help this channel. Thank you for watching. Good luck out there and take care.